So ladies and gentlemen, today I have the honor of speaking with Mr. Edwin Haynes, and he is the creator and designer of the clothing line Sav Noir. So first of all, Edwin, thank you so much for having us and to see you today. Absolutely. Hey, thank you. <laughs> you know, we're on a 50 state tour right now. And so to be in LA, Los Angeles for everybody, in your showroom is really pretty cool. So can you tell us what types of things take place here? Uh, we do a lot of, you know, a couple of things here. Uh, create, uh, design, photo shoots, fashion shows. Um, a lot of just, a lot of create, creativity happens here. A lot of brainstorming, you know, happens in this little area. So. And you, what you're passionate about is creating and designing fashion. Yes, that uh, that's what I that's that's what wakes me up in the morning. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps the gas in the tank. You know, of just like having uh, being able to pan out my vision. You know, I am a visionary, and um, I see things. And for me to be able to create and to develop them and make them come to life is like that's what excites me. Um, I get inspired by things that I see, people that walk down the street how I feel in the day, how I feel, you know, what trends to set rather than to follow, you know. And mind it, this is my backyard. I have all these resources that I put to use from fabrics, um, trims, uh, what else do you want to call it? seamstress, tailors, everything, you know, leathers, it's like, it's here. So I have a lot of fun. Can you describe your aesthetic to everybody? Um, my aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic, yeah, for Sav Noir is really uh, edgy and raw and uncut and mature um, and grown and experienced. And what I'm saying with these words is everyone wants to like play this edgy and oh, I'm wild and all this other stuff, but you could be raw and edgy at the age of 20 and really don't understand shit about life, about the world, you know. Um, but if you go into your local dive bar, you have that guy, Ben, that's sitting at the far, you know, at the, at the far end of the bar, taking shots of like, you know, Jameson, and telling stories of like how he fell and how he almost, you know, died, but like relived and, and worked himself back up to where he's at now. Those are the people that I relate to. Those are the people that I like to be around with, of uh, people with experience that are able to share with you their knowledge. You know, people that has the story, um, that understands the darkness of the aesthetic of Sav Noir. And that's the rawness of what I'm looking for, rather than more of a commercial pop. Oh, I'm gonna be edgy, I'm gonna be gothy, da da da. No, it's definitely an underground lifestyle that people don't put on, a, you know, they don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't... Put on airs? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, so... And there's a lot of black in your collection. Yes. There's a lot of black on black, like with leopard and mm -hmm. tiger, and I'm a fan of that too, myself. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, the reasoning of that, yeah, my color wave is all black. All black everything. We wear black. Um, because I also like to express how many times or like how many ways you can design in the shade black, you know, how many textures and, you know, how many uh, textures and fabrics and how the, the plays on it, you know, you could go with a patent leather with a lace, you know, and just it's the, it's the adventure of it rather than people just look at it like, oh, it's just black. Like, no, it's not just black. Like, feel this. This is velvet. This is silk velvet. This is that, you know? And I, it's just, you know, it, it, it exercises your ability. It's challenging, but also, like, gratifying. So how did this passion start for you? How did this all begin? Mm, it started with a, uh, me at a bar. And uh, at that time, you know, I was drinking and, you know, just having fun or whatnot until I was like, okay, I need to, before that though, I was a chef, you know, so I've always had that passion of like, just, you know, creating and, you know, appealing to the, to people around me and saying, hey, look what I created for you, you know? So at that point I was like, I was like, all right, you know, I've been cooking for several years now, da, da, 
I need to find this next chapter in my life. And uh, I was also sort of tired of just wasting my hard earned money on like and other people's stuff that I thought that I could do better. Had you ever made clothes though? No, but I knew I could. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I knew that I had, you know, a vision to do something and I just figured it out. I never went to fit them. I've never went to any fashion school, none of that. I knew that I was able to make a duck confit. So why not be able to translate that and say, hey, I could come up with an amazing design and, you know, amazing, an amazing uh, logo and utilize the people in my community to really bring this vision to life, you know, and... Um, That's yeah. amazing and I really want my audience to take notice about what you're saying here. You know, you were a chef and chefs are creative and so you took that but, skill to design, create, brainstorm, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm, you're talking about, mm -hmm. and then you see things in people coming at you on the street like I don't know has this ever happened to you where you see somebody and you think what they're carrying or wearing is something different than it actually is and then you're like no that I want to make that has that ever happened to you no absolutely it happens to me all the time and that's how like I do get inspired I might be at a stoplight and say okay you know that dress would look a lot better if it was taken up five inches and the sleeves were <laughs> lace or something you know right. what I mean? yeah so, that's awesome so at that point that's when i just take it upon myself and just do it and say hey this is my take on this and so do you actually sew or do you just design and get it to somebody who sews uh, because i i do sew okay. um but i don't sew all my all my stuff you know um at that point i would have to have a huge production house and all this other stuff but you but know, to try it out to get yeah. prototypes or whatever what do you call those your first samples okay your first sample. yeah so I, uh, my seamstress will come in and her and I will brainstorm and I'll tell her exactly what I would want, you know, this, that, and the other, and I will have the attempt to sew certain things and, you know, she's like, okay, well, I understand your vision. That's why we relate, I mean, we work so well together because she's my right hand. She's like my right brain and she understands my language, you know, of, of how I can, you know, how to translate something and bring it back to me. So. That's amazing, but I just, it makes me so happy for my audience that you're saying, hey, I was doing this, but this vision came to me mm -hmm. and I just made it happen despite the fact that I wasn't trained in it. Right, like honestly, dude, I'll tell you this, okay. A lot of people have a manual, a society manual, and say, hey, you know what? I'm supposed to go by the manual of the old world and say, all right, I need to go to this Ivy League college and get a major in sociology. And I'm gonna come out and get an amazing job and get a house and live the American dream. Unfortunately, in this generation, as hands-on, that's not, it's good to have book smart, but you need to figure out what works for you. And it's okay to shift because what works for you when you're at a certain age doesn't necessarily work for you when you mature and become older. And you can't be afraid to that. To, you can't be afraid to transition that. And that's okay. You know, and you have certain people that have been doing uh, their first vision since they've been 18 and now they're 50 and you're like, they're drained. They're just like, yo, I've been a robot this whole time but I wish I could do this, this, or this. Never feel that you're, you know, you're an unable to try other things. You know what I'm saying? Because you could be at a different point in your life where certain things could be more successful than what you thought at the beginning. So how'd you take this passion though and create this industry that you have now? Well, I came to Tones with it and being like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So, A, you made a decision. Yes. I made an executive decision and saying... I'm you know, all about executive decisions. And being like, okay, I tried this. Mind it. I'm in my mid-30s now. You know, I'd be like, all right, I tried this. I tried this. I tried that. I, you know, I tried cooking and all that. Mind it. I have all these skills still in my pocket and I pull them out whenever I need them. But I love what I do so much at this point. I, I mean... I don't necessarily, if it does come up in 15 years that, that I could, you know, readjust and transition to something else, then so be it. That's the journey. Yeah, that's the journey. But as of right now, I'm confident to say that I'll be a designer for the rest of my life. And to be consistent, 
which is another ma a major thing, you know, and to create a legacy. That's what it is, you know, and that you have to be consistent for that. And I think that is my journey at this point is to create a legacy and a legitimate fashion house. I'm trying to be here forever, <laughs> you know, rather than just be like, okay, well, I tried that. And that's me, I, I'm okay with that. I made that decision, you know, and for certain people, if they're, you know, if they haven't made that, and they, okay, I'm, I wanna go to med school, or I wanna go to lawyer school, da, da. and if it's not working for you that, be okay with that and say, okay, I'm gonna try something else. But grab something and hold on it and try it for a long while. You're showing your collection in New York City coming up, correct? Yes. And when is that? Uh, September, first, second week. No, it's first week of September. And I, we were lucky enough to catch a glimpse of what you have going on there. Yeah, how do you like it? Super cool, yeah. super, super cool. Oh, well, thank, thank you. So what challenges have you had to overcome to make this transition that you're talking about? Uh, and, that, and that is like, there's a lot of challenges. But you have to like strap it on and be ready to take on these obstacles and like be strong and know that you can go through it, you know? And um, let me see, I would say, uh, challenges, risk. That is the question of it all. Something of like, I, I come up with this vision, I have to take that risk challenge that I'm going to invest all this time, all this energy, all this money into this collection and to convince you that you want to buy it. So at that point, that's a challenge. Um, did you think, did you think like right off the bat that it was good enough that you were good enough or were you fearful? Like most people have that fear too. And mm -hmm. you know, as a writer too, showing people my work, mm -hmm. you'd be showing people your work and you'd be saying, buy this. Right. Um, well, it, it, it is. It is a chance. But, you know, it's just confidence. You have to know that you have that confidence and you're able to turn people into believers. Because sometimes my clothes and the fabrics that I might use might not fit the average person or the person that's so comfortable and stuck in their way. You know what I mean? And they don't want to think out of the box or feel out the box. I have to take that confidence and say, you know what? Let me, let me redirect you and let me do that. You know what I mean? And all of this are challenges. I mean, due to like searching for certain fabrics, uh, financial situations, um, all of that, just to pr you know, produce a product that is the best to persuade you to try something different and to pull you over you know, into my world and to trust, to develop that trust, me as a designer, you know, to say, all right, I wear a sad noir. So all of that, does that, does that answer to your question? Absolutely, absolutely. So what do you think you've learned about yourself then? That I'm strong. I'm strong and not to be like cocky or like to stroke myself and say, oh, oh I'm this person out of all. First of all, I'm convinced that I just, I've earned that respect. And I've convinced myself that I am a survivor. You know what I mean? Mind it like, I've been homeless. I've been on my own. I've been on my own since I've been 13 years old. No parents, no nothing. This is not a sob story. This is just to show that you're able to do whatever the fuck you want to do. You just got to be persistent and keep on fighting, you know what I mean? And like, find your place in this world. Cause when I die, I still want people to be like, yo, Sab Noir, he stood for something. Not just to be like, okay, well, there goes another one. Like, nah, you know? So at this point, like, I feel that uh, it, it, is, it is just strength, you know what I'm saying? And just to be very, you know, uh, uh, not, not the word, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just very, just self, self-convincing, you know, and uh, just know that you're able to do whatever you want to do. Is that the answer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To do that, you know, that you have that power. And like, for me to go through all of that, I've proven to myself that I'm able to make whatever I want to appear. You know what I'm saying? Of like, not to be on a spiritual thing, but like, we were all blessed with this thing to make appear your idea, your vision, your family, like whatever. We just gotta realize that we got it. 
And once you figure out that you've got that, which is confidence, and you're able to make a fucking mountain move, then there you go. You've, you've won half the battle. That is where you like start living. You know what I mean? So I do know what you mean because you're speaking my language. This is what I'm all about. This, yeah. is, what, this is why we're on this 50 state tour, just to help people see exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. And you know, you're convinced and you're like, that's when you start living. You say, okay, I, I, I got it. You know, I start having self-confidence. Because you're, you're not just designing clothes, you're designing your life, you're designing your future. Absolutely. I got it. Absolutely. And that's where it's here. And I'm just wondering, you know, at the age of 13, how this, how you got to be this wise? When this just, st I know you started then, mm -hmm. and there I was no, a process. I had no other option. I had a, that's what I'm saying. It goes back to being a survivor. I had no other option. I had to, you know, if I don't, if I don't win, I don't eat. You know, so that uh, that work ethic has carried on with me to this point of professionalism, of grinding. You know, you have to survive, and that that my I've been working every day of my life to survive. But it's, no. yes, and it's like, and of doing something you love. Yes. And of, of making a legacy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of making a difference. And of saying that my, my time here mattered. Really, you know, absolutely. And there was points, you know, I, like I've been a skateboarder, I've been in a punk band, all of the above. And at that time, throughout the 20, you know, those teen years and like mid-20s, that's all just like boot camp to figure out what the fuck you about to do for the rest of the world. And like... You know, this is what you do do, this is what you don't do. And you got to take all these lessons, you know. So that, uh, like I said, I didn't have any other option. I had to, like, make what I, the decisions that I made uh, pay off, you know, executive decisions. I didn't have necessarily time to, like, mess up or take unforced errors, you know what I mean, of, like, mistakes. Like, oh, shit, I forgot. Like, no, you know. I had to get hit by the truck to say, hey, don't do this, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, like that, uh, is, is that same work ethic has got me to where I am now, and it's like people don't understand it. They're like, how do you do that shit? And I'm like, why not? Like, how, what else, what else would I be know? doing? What I'm, else are you supposed to do? I hear you. you know? like, so, did you, because you are so visual, before you left your job as a chef, did you envision all of this first? Did you see it for yourself? I knew that like uh, the type of, I like to plateau everything that I do. I like to somewhat be the best that I can do. Um, I'm a very, very good cook, you know, but um, when, I, when I trans, you know. Transition? Yeah, when I transitioned, um, I, I knew that it was going to be something. I knew that because I wasn't going to stop until it was. And I know that's, that's knowing yourself. So to answer your question, yes. I didn't know. I, I knew, but I didn't. I respect of how long it was going to take. And I knew it was going to be a long process. And knowing, that the long, uh, knowing of how long it was going to take was also discipline. And at that point, when I made that, that decision, I also became sober, where I was like, I'm not drinking, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, I'm not partying, da, da, da. I'm, this is a one-track mind that's going to keep me disciplined and focused till here, you know, and, and that is what's been going on. Did you see yourself sitting here looking all slick with your fancy clothes on? You got I've your grills, you got sick. this earring. I've you're always all... been slick. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, no, well... I, you know, if, if that's what it came with it, then yes, you know, I've all, yes, I'm a, I'm a man and I've matured and yes. Another question for my audience. How did you, when you made the decision, how did you explore this for yourself? Like how did, what did you look into first in order to get the information you needed to step out of that box? Um... The information from my peers, is that what you're saying? Um, validation, 
of course, uh, I'm like, all right, this is my idea. And I started it with a pen and lighter and all of that. With your brand on it. Yeah, with the, you know, branding, it was a logo. And I guess to, to, to like get it going and to be like, okay, yeah, this is the right track was a validation from my peers and people like saying, oh, this is great. This is great, da da da. And you formed an audience kind of, you I formed. Did. I did, it was pretty cool. You know, it was already there due to that's other a things. Unique, that was that's right. a very unique way to, to go about starting a fashion line, I think. I think it's pretty cool. Thanks. Um, Finding the people who would want. That, that would support it, yeah. you know, and like genuinely support it instead of like doing the American way of yeah, yeah, and a person. Oh, yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. This one, you know, whatever, yeah, he's crazy. But like genuinely having people uh, support you and to this day when I go back to San Francisco or whatever people are like cheering me on like dude I remember when you were just in the bar and you asked me to wear it and then now you're about to show in New York and you're getting these write-ups and all this other stuff so at that point you know there it's it does feel good of just like yo you know I'm not necessarily only doing it for me you know I'm doing it for the people that believe in me and I can't let my peers down, you know? And I, for me to even like think about that, it like, I get emotional because I'm like, dude, it's more, it's bigger than just me. It's a community that I developed that believe in me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it, it's, it does feel like a large responsibility, but I'm that man and I've trained myself to take it on. I can't fail. This is like, I cannot, you know, how, like I said, it's my own, it's, there's no other option. So this will prevail and this will be something fabulous. It is something fabulous. Uh, and for, you know, at the state where it's at and for it to mature in another six, seven years, you know, people will be, they're on, they're on this adventure with me. You know, so. I totally get that. Yeah. So for a final thought, how can you motivate my audience to say, you know, get out and do what moves you. Um, I would say trust in yourself, believe in yourself, um, be consistent, you know, discipline yourself, whatever distractions you have, uh, filter that out of your life and stick, stick to what you believe in. And consistency is always development and you will learn, you will learn so much on your adventure that you will hunger for more and that's what will keep you there you know if you're really serious about it so discipline for sure but also just believe in yourself you know and you can do whatever you want to do how can they check out your clothes what's the best way um social media uh savonoir.com um instagram i know i'm following you on instagram right you? now yeah cool yeah what do you think love it that's how i knew when i came in i'm like dude like i know i'm 48 and a little chunky okay i'm not your ideal model however i do have an edge and i am mature and i totally appreciate you, your all aesthetic that matters. that's it that's all that matters i have the story yeah you, you get know? it yeah you I get, get it. it um instagram sav underscore noir uh twitter facebook sav noir um yeah come to la you know this is our showroom come say hi and we'll take it from there well, I wish you the best luck. And I know you don't need it because you're working hard to, to ensure it, to ensure things happen. And you are really doing it. And I'm just really happy. I want to say I'm proud of you and I just met you. Does that make sense? But I'm just, I guess I can only leave it with I'm so happy for no, you. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I talk to you, 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 and we look. We love and we hate, we hate and we tap and run straight. We try to relate, this is for breakthrough.